Good morning, uh, everybody. Um, I will present, first of all, or rather remind you of uh, some of the main uh, principles around the greenhouse gas emission methodology before we go into the really practical part and uh, where Adrian and then uh, Laura and Jakub will present uh, concrete examples based on the help desk questions. A lot are based on the help desk questions where we feel there is need of a specific focus or further clar clarifications. So, but just uh, before we start with uh, these uh, practical uh, examples, let me remind you uh, why the greenhouse gas emission methodology is so important. As you know, you're working on innovative projects uh, which, uh, whose aim is to reduce significantly greenhouse gas emission emissions. So the potential for this reduction is very, very important and it is uh, the first criterion uh, which we will, will be looked at both at first and second stage. It will, uh, the greenhouse gas emission avoidance potential uh, also will uh, be part of the cost efficiency criterion in second stage. This is just a reminder. Also, the greenhouse gas emission avoidance potential you, uh, will be uh, will serve as a basis for disbursement of the grants and for monitoring of the projects. I, I want to underline here that any assumptions that are taken during the calculation uh, of the emission avoidance potential during the evaluation of submission and evaluation uh, will remain the same. So for the purposes of disbursement of the grants, we will look at uh, the greenhouse gas emission avoidance potential as uh, evaluated and valid, validate, as calculated and validated by the external evaluators. On top of that, uh, during the end, well, once the projects are, have entered into operation, they will have also uh, to provide further details on the actual greenhouse gas emission avoidance. For example, we take electricity as an input with zero emission. Uh, intensity. However, for knowledge sharing purposes, we would require, for example, uh, to know where ex exactly the electricity will come from uh, on an hourly basis, for example, so we can actually estimate the actual emission avoidance. But that is just for knowledge sharing purposes. So that is just a reminder of uh, what we do with the greenhouse gas emission avoidance potential. Then uh, we look at the, the score by itself is uh, composed of two elements. One is the absolute greenhouse gas emission avoidance, which in fact is the emissions that would occur in the absence of the project, the difference between the emissions that would occur in the absence of the project and the emissions from the project activity. And the other component is the relative emission avoidance, which is calculated as a percentage basically of the absolute emission avoidance uh, divide, divided uh, by the emissions in the reference case. That's a small reminder. So um, applicants will have uh, to run through a few different steps in order to calculate the greenhouse gas emission avoidance potential. And uh, we have structured our presentation around those. Uh, so basically, every applicant will have to define project and organizational boundaries, classify the project in the correct sector, and identify the methodology to be used for calculating the greenhouse gas emission avoidance, that is step three. Then the applicant will have to identify the reference scenario in step four, in five, to apply the, the project data, so to calculate the project emissions. And finally, once the calculations are done, uh, these have to be up uploaded in the portal, like together with the submission of the application. So, uh, this uh, in the second step, basically once the project has uh, been identified, one key um, choice is the choice of the sector. In fact, in many cases, it is rather simple and obvious. Uh, oops, sorry. Uh, 
that is actually in the majority of the cases. But there will be cases where the, the applicant will have a choice. And we would like actually to leave the choice to the applicant where there are such cases. For example, if there is a combined project from steel and chemicals, the applicant may submit it either in, either in steel or in chemicals. Uh, there would be cases uh, when for example, a, pro a project, the main aim is to produce met methanol e for transport application. Then uh, the correct choice would be refineries. However, if this methanol is designed, uh, is uh, aimed to be further refined into chemicals, then the correct choice may be, in fact, chemicals. And what I would like uh, to underline here that in that case, in fact, the methanol is an intermediate product and this is also possible. So they, a project can aim to produce an intermediate product, but the steps for refining into final product need to be added into the calculation of the emissions. And uh, I, another uh, thing to consider is that uh, we are also accepting applications for uh, where the final use is the, the main aim. For example, uh, hydrogen used in ferries or in, in vehicles, and that is also possible. And the final use in that case uh, will determine the comparison with the reference case. Uh, so, for example, uh, we will go actually, we'll give you some more examples, but if it is uh, like uh, hydrogen used in ferries, uh, then the reference case would be uh, ferries run like the, the normal way to run ferries. So, um, my last slide before we delve into uh, the examples is just again uh, a reminder where the documents, where the methodologies are found. The main uh, document, of course, is Annex C, and I believe uh, all applicants uh, who are getting ready their projects have already read it uh, very much in detail where there are different sections for the different parts of the methodology. Um, energy intensive industry uh, includes also CCU, biofuels and substitute products. Then we have uh, the sections for carbon capture and storage, renewable electricity and heating and energy storage. In addition, we have published also a specific guidance to help with some examples on the calculations for energy intensive industries and they are calculation tools which will make life very easy for CCS projects, uh, renewable electricity and heat and energy storage projects, which are fairly easier uh, to calculate. So, uh, my, actually, sorry, that is my uh, last slide, and that is linked actually to the methodology. There is the possibility to submit hybrid projects. This means actually that uh, the methodology of, from different sections has to be combined. For example, energy storage is one part of the project, another, project, uh, another part is renewable energy. So the applicant has to combine the emission avoidance calculation from the two different sections. Or, for example, bio CCS, we will come up with an example later on. Uh, then the methodology has to be combined from energy intensive industries on one hand and CCS on the other hand. And for the relative greenhouse gas em emission avoidance, the calculation is in fact, based on the cumulated emission avoidance and the cumulated project emissions. So you will have to cumulate in, in the, to calculate separately and then cumulate. Uh, but this will become clearer, I suppose, with the examples which we will give. So um, I will pass now the floor to Adrian O'Connell, who is going to present uh, the examples for energy intensive industries. 